Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I watched uh, Dune Part 2. I I think it was better than the first part. I, I gotta say, this is what I wrote for uh, my letterboxed review. With more intense action, fuller characters, wilder swings, Part 2 is far more entertaining than Part 1. Yet thematically, it feels like another stopgap before the inevitable sequel. The visit to the Harkonnen planet perked me up, but it wasn't enough to overshadow Denny Villeneuve's muted vision of Dune. Perhaps it's WB's and Villeneuve's intention to assuage the audience with alt Star Wars before delivering the full dosage in Part 3. Let me know when that comes out, and then I might be inclined to reevaluate the first two chapters of the cinematic retelling. Sure, it's encouraging that this adaptation is allowed to be critical of heroes, but the message is compromised with the continued erasure of the source material's Arabic and revolutionary inspirations, and the film's casting to the changing of the in-universe language. With a few more years of discourse, perhaps part three will rectify past mistakes and deliver the more daring and weirder kind of sci-fi I'm looking for. Just to elaborate a little bit about the Arabic inspirations, there's a, a YouTuber actually who did a good good breakdown of this. Um, Jesse Gender actually recommended this on her video. Uh, it's pretty long but well worth the watch. She cites these two, two articles for sure that I would definitely recommend reading uh, if you want to know more about it, Erasing Arabs from Dune by Khaldun Khalib. This, uh, The Muslimness of Dune um, by Harris Durrani. You know, and when I mention how it has revolutionary inspirations as well from the, from the Arab world, I do want to, want to point out uh, a quote from Erasing Arabs from Dune. In fact, one of the most famous lines from 1984 movie adaptation is Paul's rally cry of li long live the fighters. In the book, it is heard in the Fremen's Arabic-inspired language of Chakabsa as Haya Chohada. The phrase comes directly from the Algerian War of Independence against the French, just years before the first Dune book was published. It's in the new movies, they actually had an, uh, a, a linguist come in and actually create a whole new language for the movies that kind of erases the 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 arabic inspired language that the, the book had you know and, and of course there's no like uh I, mean, I think there's maybe one arabic actor in the in in the sequel but you know a lot of the the front facing uh, actors in the fremen uh force who are inspired by arabic uh, you know revolutionaries you know aren't even arabic in regards to representation of Arabic people in Hollywood, they tend to uh, just feel like, you know, all brown people are the same. You know, they cast black actors, Latino actors to represent Arabic people. It's a shame that these new films also continue that trend in, in a story that is heavily inspired by, uh, by Arab culture, you know. So those are my general thoughts. But I also want to get into... Uh, I guess maybe the spoilers and the ending of, of Doom Part 2. I've, I've learned that Villeneuve's style is just not my cup of tea. And visually and, and aesthetically, it's just a little bit more grounded than I want. I want a weirder uh, Dune. I want a weirder sci-fi story. I did like the action scenes. I thought they were really well done. Uh, the opening scene, for example, was probably the best scene. The Harkonnen soldiers like floating about to get to the top of the cliff. They did... A decent job of developing Zendaya and, and Timothy's character here. Um, certainly people have been a bit complaining about the ending. Chani, Zendaya's character, gets upset and runs away when Paul's character decides to uh, ask uh, the Emperor's daughter's hand in marriage. Chani isn't just upset about that. That's not the only reason she decides to, like, you know, leave leave the, the room and, and go right on a sandworm. I think it's also because she feels that Paul has betrayed his word in the sense that he is now seeking power, absolute power, and no longer is 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 really fighting for the Fremen people, but is just uh, in this political marriage and this uh, in, in taking over as emperor and like not really 
changing the status quo, but just continuing the cycle. He's uh, betraying the, the ideals that she has and that he she felt that he was going to stick to. And basically, he's, he's just going to continue uh, becoming another oppressor, pretty much. And so that's, that's why I feel like the main reason she, she decides to, to turn her back on him, you know. It's definitely a change from the books from what I know. I'm, I'm not like a book reader, so I don't know the, the exact differences, but I have been watching a lot of videos and, and reading about a bunch about about dune in the books or in the original uh 84 movie she stays by by paul's side right she doesn't really play out like a rebellious character and in this one she's i, I do like how how johnny represents the kind of a fremen who is is against the idea of, of of paul being the messiah she's like the rational secular t- type of of fremen who's opposed to to Paul's ascendancy, while you know, while the other ones are most everyone else is like fully on board with with Paul, and I, I do like that because it gives her, you know, a better character arc, and I think you know it possibly could set her up to be uh, a main protagonist in in the following movie, and which I think is interesting. You know, also Rebecca first, and I think also did a, a pretty real good job in this movie. I think maybe she was the standout uh, of the film. And in her turn, I think I really, I really thought was well done. You know, she's she's the one who actually forced Johnny to to fulfill her prophecy and have her save, uh, revive uh, Paul. You know, and so I thought that whole scene played out really well. Denny definitely made an effort to to portray Paul and and his mother as like you know as, as like as bad guys, as villains in this story. And although I do think that. You know, it may go over some people's heads, especially if you're not, if you're just casually watching and you're just there for the, for the, for the, the war scenes and the big bombs and, and clashes. You know, it does end in this, in this heroic moment where they're all riding on those worms, charging the Capitol. Like, it definitely, like, feels like it's the end of an episode of a series and there's still, there's, there's a lot more to tell, you know. It, it, it does feel more conclusive than the first one. The first one felt like it just ended ab- abruptly, almost, you know, like in the middle of, of of Paul's character arc. While this one concludes at the moment where where Paul's at its highest point, it doesn't feel quite quite complete either. Denny Villeneuve is going to be making a third one. That's what he's planning to do, and it seems like this one's doing pretty well at the box office. So uh, it would appear that we will be getting a third one, which based on the second book of the dune series uh dune messiah my understanding is that it makes it a lot clearer that paul is in fact a villain he's like uh basically a dictator of the universe and he's gonna you know take complete control um of the spice and all that of course it there's little seeds here throughout we definitely uh his mother definitely makes it clear uh to to paul that that the that the space witches planted this this myth, this idea in the culture, and these these witches basically are using eugenics to like create the uh, the perfect so called uh, being, or there's one so called hero who will will save the universe, or whatever. And so it's like all planned out by them. Definitely a critique of of, of uh, organized religion, and then overall definitely a, a critique of, of hero worship. Another highlight, I did like uh, Austin Butler's character. I thought that was pretty, he did a pretty good job there. The whole sequence, uh, it was like a shot in infrared or something, black and white, when they were on the Harkonnen planet, the gladiator scene, the unusual alien weirdness I want, I want to see more of, you know. It felt like we were actually watching something alien out of this world, you know. While like most of the scenes in on Arrakis were just like, oh, that's just a desert planet. That's just, we've seen that before. Tons of times. There were some creepy sequences when Leah Sadu comes and seduces uh, Awesome Butler's character. That was a fascinating little scene. Just you know, just visually, aesthetically, and uh, tone wise, I thought that's when when the you know when the artistry really shined in this movie. Because I'm not too down with the more grounded, brutalist architecture, uh, sandy, and just like this just feels like a, a sci-fi video game. Like all these scenes here. Warner Brothers, or maybe just Denny likes that style, but they thought it was more, this focusing on this would be more appealing to general audiences. I don't know. Instead of going, you know, even weirder, maybe, you know, like, maybe like what Lynch was doing, uh, was trying to do, or 
Jordowski was trying to do with was his attempt uh, back in the seventies that never came to fruition. You know, I, I guess like maybe I'm biased and I just I want to see more of that psychedelic shit. <laughs> Overall, the, these two dude movies don't really gel with me as much as maybe other people. Um, that's just kind of my 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 personal taste. Stylistically, it just kind of feels like alternative Star Wars um, for most of the movie. I'm just really curious, you know, if if uh, they're going to be able to, if Denny's going to be able to do, go out there, go all out with the third one and really weird us out. Hopefully, like that's, I mean, I, I haven't read the books. So I don't know how weird it gets. I'm sure, I, I'm pretty sure it gets even super weird or maybe too weird in, in the following books, um, in which Denny doesn't really intend to, to adapt. But yeah, but overall, I mean, I was, I would still, you know, recommend this movie. I think like it, it is nice to have a, a, a big uh, blockbuster movie and having as, as a central pillar being really about uh, challenging the idea of, of a hero and like that we shouldn't really uh, worship, uh, you know, a central figure. The power corrupts. So that's really what I guess the story is about. And you know we'll see if it, if it falls through in, in in the in the following movies because I feel like there is like elements of that in this one part two but I want to see a more daring take on on hero worship in the next one because apparently it seems that uh, Frank Herbert kind of snuck in this little critique of hero worship in Dune when he first started publishing it and really even upset some a lot of people with Dune Messiah that basically makes a uh, Paul out to be to be the villain and, and do Messiah. I, I imagine that's what Denny's gonna do with the next one. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, it feels like uh, uh, the middle part of of, of a big a big story. So it's kind of hard to evaluate it at this moment where I'm not sure how the third one's gonna land. You know, I feel like other like long uh, adaptations, epic ap- adaptations like Lord of the Rings. I think those films they kind of work on their own a bit like fellowship of the ring you know works by itself as as a movie um it has a, a full a full arc there and then but but these right now these stories i feel like you, you can't really separate them maybe like by 2030 when the next one comes out it, it'll feel more cohesive but we'll see that's that's dune